Consider the following situation. Jupiter is the most massive planet in our solar system. Its gravity is 76 feet per second squared compared to Earth's 32 feet per second squared. The data below represents the height of a rocket launched from a hill on Jupiter. So T is going to represent the time uh, that the rocket has traveled in seconds. And J of T is going to represent the height of this rocket on Jupiter in feet. The first question here asks us to use technology to determine a quadratic regression model for this situation. This is very similar to the linear regression that we did in the last uh, problem here in, in this unit. Um, really what we're trying to do is just basically come up with the best quadratic equation uh, that fits this particular data. Now why would we use quadratic equation type of data? Well let's take a look. First thing that we're going to want to do is have our, uh, in this video we're going to show you how to solve this using the calculator. Um, I'm using a TI-84 plus here. The instructions again should work pretty well if you have any TI-83 or 84 model. If you do not, then I suggest you watch the next video which will solve the same exact problem using Excel. The first thing that you need to do if you want technology to find the a any type of equation of best fit, in this case we want a quadratic equation of best fit, we need to tell the data values to the calculator. So we start by hitting the stat button. We're going to choose the edit option and then we want to clear out any data that we already have in the memory. So we're going to go ahead and clear that out. Again to clear out the data go up, highlight the list name, hit clear and then hit enter. Once you've done that we're ready to go ahead and type in our values. For t our values are very simple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll arrow over to list two where we'll put in the heights. So 290 feet followed by 470 feet followed by 590 feet and then 620 and we wrap up with 575. Now once you have all the data in here remember we can look at a graph of what this data looks like. If we click on zoom and arrow down to find zoom stat went too far. There we go. See here? You can see why we may want to choose a parabola instead of a linear equation because our data seems to come up and then kind of top off and start heading back down. And if you think about throwing a rocket up into the air, right, we've been using quadratic models for that type of behavior because it goes up, levels off, comes back down. So finding a quadratic equation is going to be much better than a linear equation that's just going to not do that great for the way that the points are all aligned. All right, so how do we calculate the best regression equation? Well, remember all of our stats are related, or all of our values are found on the stat menu. We can go back and arrow over to calc. This time, however, I don't want the best line. I want the best quadratic equation. So I'm going to choose option five this time that says quad reg. Choose that. We want our x value in list one, our y value in list two, nothing in the frequency list. And then we want to go ahead and calculate. Again, if you have an earlier model TI, it won't show you this screen. It's going to just assume that you have to have those values in list one and list two. Now, once you come here, notice that the equation, they give you the general form of what a quadratic equation looks like at the top. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, and then it gives us the values for A, B, and C. I also have an R squared value here, and that works very much like the one for the linear equations. Notice here my R squared value is 0.99929. That is very close to 1, and so we can interpret that our data is a very close fit to the equation that the calculator has come up with here. So in the first problem here, it asks us to use technology to determine a quadratic regression model for this situation round to three decimal places. What we're going to do is we're just going to go in here and use this y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and then we're going to rewrite it with those a, b, and c values in here. So negative 38.571 x squared plus instead of b we're going to write 303.429 x plus c instead of c we're going to just write 23. And there's my equ best fit equation regression model that's a quadratic equation. Now we can, once you have a quadratic equation model, we can use that to answer other questions about our situation. The first question here asks, based on your model, what is the height of the launching tower? Well, it may seem kind of strange to ask that kind of question, but remember, when was it that you started launching? We started launching when the time was equal to zero. Um, in this case, remember, our time 
is our input, so that's where the x's are, and our height is the output, which is where our y's are. So here, if we want to find where the height of the launching tower is, we're going to put t equals 0, or in our case, we're going to put x equals 0 to find the y. Uh, if we put 0 in here for x squared, that's all gone. If we put 0 in here for x, that's gone too, and all I'm left with is 23 feet. So the launching tower would have to be 23 feet tall in order to get this particular configuration. The last question asks, based on your model, when will the rocket hit the surface of Jupiter? Well, you're shooting the rocket, it's going up, it's going to come back down, it's going to crash when the height is equal to zero. So you don't have h as a variable anywhere. So when j of t is equal to zero, or if you want to think of it as our output when y is equal to zero. Well, if we put that into our equation here, zero equals negative 38.571 x squared plus 303.429 x plus 23. Now I need to solve this equation. All right, well, I have an x squared and an x term in here, and that means that uh, I can't combine those like terms in any way to get the x alone. So instead, we're going to need to either factor or use the quadratic equation with such a mess in terms of these variables. Definitely the quadratic equation is the way to go. My a value will be negative 38.571. My b value will be 303.429. And my c value will be 23. Once we have all of those points identified, we're going to go ahead and plug our values into the quadratic equation. Again, that's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Now let's plug our points in. Negative 303.429 plus or minus the square root of, instead of b squared, we're going to have 303.429 squared minus 4 times negative 38.571 times c is 23, and all divided by 2 times a, which was negative 38.571. Now we can go ahead and evaluate each of our sections. Uh, negative, so we end up with negative 303.429 plus or minus the square root of, let's go ahead and figure out what that whole mess inside there is going to be. Uh, it's 303.429 squared minus 4 times negative 38.57 times 23. It's going to give me 9,500, or 95,000, excuse me, 617.60 divided by, and then we need to do 2 times negative 38.571. When I do that, I get negative 77.142 on the bottom. Make sure that negative shows up there. All right, we're almost done. Now we need to find our answers. We're going to get two answers, of course, one from following the plus line and one from following the minus line. So I have negative 303.429 plus radical 95617.6 divided by negative 77.142. On the other side, I'm going to use the minus, negative 303.429 minus radical 95617.6, all divided by negative 77.142. All right, so we plug them in and find our, find our values. For the first one, we get negative 303 plus radical 95617.6. Make sure you hit the enter there. We get... Uh, 6.221 divided by negative 77.142. That should give me a negative solution there, negative 0 0.081. On the other side, and that's negative. On the other side over here, for my second solution, when I do this, I'm going to have negative 303 minus, this time, the radical 95617.6, which gives me a negative 612.22. Divide that by the negative 77.142. And I get a positive. 
7.94. All right. So the question was asking, when is the rocket going to hit the surface of Jupiter? My values for x or my input is time in seconds. Uh, a solution that I do get here is negative 0.08 seconds. From a practical perspective, that doesn't make any sense. You can't, um, nothing happened before we launched the rocket, so that is not the solution we're looking for. We just want to keep the positive answer in this case, which is 7.94 seconds. So it'll take that long for the rocket to come back and hit the ground again.